The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there and so were the friars. John, Alexander and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If you were being called to to account today of an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. The salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then confess together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows what they have done and about an outstanding miracle and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to any people, to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again, and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen or heard. After the other threat, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who had miraculously healed was, was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Then they heard this. They raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and earth and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through your mouth of the servant or our father David. Why do the nations rage? and the people plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers together gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of the holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions were his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued 
testifying them to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, bought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet.